Julian Assange is a step closer to being extradited back to the U.S. to face espionage charges. I recently stumbled across this article on Yahoo. We begin with breaking news from the UK. A new report by Yahoo News has come out with some serious claims. It goes into detail on the CIA's plot to assassinate Julian Assange. United States officials claim the US made plans to abduct and kill Julian Assange. Did the CIA under President Trump plan to kidnap and assassinate WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange? It goes into details about the CIA's war on WikiLeaks and its founder, even plans stating that the U.S. had plans to abduct or, or even assassinate Julian Assange. 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 committed clear criminal, criminal activity that no more journalists for the story. The CIA and the Trump administration, Assange. administration Assange. had considered assassinating Julian Assange. This article completely blew my mind. But before we dive into this article, let's put three minutes on the clock and I will catch you up with who Julian Assange is. Julian Assange was a very talented Australian hacker. He hacked into NASA, the Pentagon, the US Department of Defense, and Lockheed Martin, all when he was a teen. And at age 21, he was caught trying to hack into a Canadian telecom company. He spent the next two years in prison and stayed relatively quiet for a few years. And then in 2006, at age 35, he started WikiLeaks. This site was totally anonymous, so sources could never be charged with stealing info. They would take these stories of corruption and pass them to newspapers like the New York Times. They were publishing secret documents on everything from drone strikes in Yemen, oil scandals in Peru, corruption in the Arab world, Tibetan uprising in China, and the US handbook on the treatment of prisoners in Guantanamo Bay. WikiLeaks was what journalism is supposed to be, a way to expose corruption and put checks and balances on the elites. Then this happened. For more than two and a half years, the wire service Reuters has been trying to find out what happened to their two staff members on this street in the suburb of New Baghdad. WikiLeaks says this is what happened. This is a video from Chelsea Manning a 22-year-old Army intelligence analyst in Iraq exposed hundreds of thousands of classified government documents from a military computer and uploaded them to WikiLeaks. These leaks shined a light on secret raids where U.S. soldiers had executed Iraqi families in cold blood. It proved that the U.S. military was keeping track of the death count in Iraq, something that they lied about not doing, and it was a huge number. The leaks showed more than 15,000 civilians were killed propagating a culture of abuse and torture by the Iraqi army and police. And this is something that the U.S. military knew and did nothing about. By publishing the leaks from the army analysts, it was like Julian Assange threw up a huge middle finger to the U.S. war machine. And that's someone you don't want to piss off. While in London, there was a lot of heat on Julian, so he decided to seek protection in the Ecuadorian embassy. This is where the UK tipped its hand and showed its cards. You see, there were dozens of police surrounding the embassy like piranhas. The intelligence officers were disguised everywhere. The US wanted Assange and the UK was complicit. It was like solitary confinement. He continued to run WikiLeaks and fight the corruption from behind walls. Julian was nonpartisan in his hate for the political elite. He set out to publish emails from the Democratic Party and Clinton's campaign chair, John Podesta. The emails helped Trump win the election. However, a year into Trump's presidency, Assange leaked a trove of CIA documents, which Trump took personally. I still love WikiLeaks. Uh, I know nothing about WikiLeaks. It's not my thing. Okay, so let's go back to this article. Okay, so here's some things in the article that blew my mind. Like, look at this. This is one quote from the article. By late 2015, Ecuador had hired a Spanish security company called UC Global to protect the country's London embassy, where Assange had spent several years running WikiLeaks from his living quarters. However, the kicker was, unbeknownst to Ecuador, by mid-2017, UC Global was also working for the U.S. intelligence, according to two former employees who testified in a Spanish criminal investigation first reported by LPA? I don't know, I'm not French. 
The Spanish firm was providing U.S. intelligence agencies with detailed reports of Assange's activities and visitors as well as video and audio surveillance from secretly installed devices in the embassy, the employees testified. A former U.S. national security official confirmed that U.S. intelligence had access to video and audio feeds of Assange within the embassy, but declined to specify how it acquired them. So this was like a sick game of Big Brother. By December of 2017, the plan to get Assange to Russia appeared to be ready. UC Global had learned that Assange would receive a diplomatic passport from Ecuadorian authorities with the aim of leaving the embassy to transit to a third state. On December 15th, Ecuador made Assange an official diplomat of that country and planned to assign him to the embassy in Moscow, according to documents obtained by the Associated Press. March 7th, 2017 is when things really got out of control. Mike Pompeo, the head of the CIA, declared a personal war against Julian Assange. This came after what is called the Vault 7 leak. This was the most embarrassing leak yet from the federal government. This was the most classified internal documentation regarding the CIA's secret hacking division and their tactics of cyber warfare. It exposed how they could break into almost any phone operating system. The agency ultimately concluded it was the largest data loss in CIA history. Pompeo and other top agency leaders were completely detached from reality because they were so embarrassed about Vault 7, they were seeing blood. The agency's WikiLeaks proposals so worried some administration officials that they quietly reached out to staffers and members of Congress on the House and Senate Intelligent Committees to alert them to what Pompeo was suggesting. There were serious intel oversight concerns that were being raised through the escapade, said a Trump national security official. On April 13, 2017, Mike Pompeo called them a hostile intelligence service. And this justified offensive measures, which means nothing is off limits. He was enraged and paranoid that they were trying to plant people in the CIA to get info. WikiLeaks was a complete obsession of Pompeo's. Trump's CIA director is calling WikiLeaks a hostile intelligence service. Director Mike Pompeo accused WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange of working with Russia to leak stolen information from Hillary Clinton campaign officials. WikiLeaks responded on Twitter saying Pompeo himself highlighted one of those leaks last year and called it proof that the Democrats' primary race was fixed. Nancy Cordes is in Washington with the CIA's new vow to take action. Nancy, good morning. Good morning. The CIA director doesn't speak publicly very often, so it was striking that he chose to make WikiLeaks the focus of this speech. He called the founder, Julian Assange, a narcissist and a coward who has done irreparable damage to U.S. national security. And he warned that Assange is assuming incorrectly that the First Amendment will protect him from punishment. After Vault 7, Pompeo and Deputy CIA Director Gina Haspel wanted vengeance on Assange. Pompeo had a plan to kidnap Julian. Some national security officials worried that the CIA's proposal to kidnap Assange would not only be illegal, but it would jeopardize the prosecution of the WikiLeaks founder. Concerned the CIA's plan would derail a potential criminal case, the Justice Department expedited drafting of charges against Julian Assange to ensure that they were in place if he were to be brought to the United States. And a federal grand jury has indicted WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange on 18 counts related to the release of classified information. He is accused of conspiring with former Army intelligence officer Chelsea Manning to hack into a Pentagon computer. The indictment claims Assange unlawfully obtained and then published the classified material. Some of the documents leaked exposed abuse by the U.S. military in Iraq and Afghanistan. Officials picked up what they viewed were alarming reports that Russian intelligence operatives were preparing to sneak Julian Assange to Moscow. So they had to act fast to get Assange. The CIA and White House began preparing a number of scenarios to foil Assange's Russian departure plans, according to three former officials. Those included potential gun battles with the Kremlin operatives on the streets of London, crashing a car into a Russian diplomatic vehicle transporting Assange, and shooting out the tires of a Russian plane carrying Assange before it could take off for Moscow. U.S. officials asked their British counterparts to do the shooting if the gunfire was required, and the British agreed. There was also some reports of CIA breaking into homes of WikiLeaks associates. 
asked whether the CIA had broken into the WikiLeaks associates' homes and stolen and wiped their hard drives, a former intelligence official declined to go into detail, but he said some actions were taken. Uh, whoever those 30 people who allegedly spoke with one of these reporters, uh, they should all be prosecuted for speaking about classified activity inside the Central Intelligence Agency. Maybe they didn't. Maybe Isakov just made it up. But you should know I take seriously my responsibilities to protect that information. Hmm. Uh, second, second thing, uh, there is no doubt WikiLeaks is, in fact, a, a non-state hostile intelligence service. They're actively seeking to steal American classified information. This isn't good reporting. This isn't asking someone to leak. This is working to steal secrets from the United States of America. Some discussion even went beyond kidnapping. One official said that he briefed the president in a 2017 meeting in which the president asked if the CIA could assassinate Assange and provide him options for how to do so. The crazy thing about this article is that it has over 30 U.S. intelligence officials, including very senior and named, going on record saying that the U.S. government was actively plotting to assassinate Julian Assange in the U.K. So. This plan never came to fruition. In April of 2019, Julian was kicked out of the embassy. He was in the embassy for seven years, and as soon as he walked out the door, he was arrested by the British. The U.S. formally requested extradition. The thing was, Julian was not a U.S. citizen, but a foreign government was demanding that he be sent to their country to face 175 years in prison. For what? Journalism. The same Espionage Act that justified the raid on this guy's beautiful, beautiful home is what they're gonna use for Assange. I don't know, maybe you should have done something while you're in office. He's in prison because he exposed corruption and he exposed normalized torture. I mean, the media has been gaslighting about this for a long time. They've said that the only reason that he was in the embassy was by his own volition and that there was no threat to him. And then he was arrested as soon as he stepped out of the embassy. inside Belmarsh High Security Prison, which is the harshest prison in the UK, known as Britain's Guantanamo Bay. He's been inside Belmarsh Prison day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, in a small prison cell on his own for most of the day. His interactions are with prisoners, some of which are dangerous. He is suffering greatly. He suffered a mini stroke in October. And obviously that's a sign that his health is in serious decline. It's also a difficult struggle for him mentally. Julian suffers from clinical depression. He has all his adult life. And it's obviously very difficult for him spending so much time in isolation away from his children and from his family and friends. I have two children with Julian. They are three and four. Our eldest was born when Julian was still in the embassy in 2017 and he would go to the embassy to visit Julian. We kept it secret so a friend would come in, posing as his father, until a guard from the embassy approached me outside the embassy and said that I shouldn't bring the baby in anymore because they had been instructed to steal a nappy in order to analyze the baby's DNA. Our youngest just turned three. He was a few weeks old when Julian was first arrested. And he's only ever seen his father inside Belmarsh prison. For both of them, the only memories they have of Julian is inside Belmarsh prison. Because I don't know how long our children will have with their father, if they just have a few months maybe, before Julian's taken to the United States and will most likely lose his life there. I try to make their experience with their father as enjoyable and light as possible. I don't talk about the fact that we're going to a prison. I've just said that there are bad people that are preventing Julian from coming home, but that he wants to be at home. But obviously when they go into the prison, they experience the prison. They walk past the razor wire, they get sniffed by the sniffer dogs. They have to get searched multiple times going into the prison inside their mouth and under their feet. So they experience it themselves but I don't want the experience to be scary or intimidating. So I do my best to make it a normal situation. The only thing that matters to me is to be able to reunite my family again. Julian has been deprived of being able to see his children grow up day to day. All we want is to be a normal family. The fact that he's being deprived from his family for no reason at all, just out of a spiteful, cruel sense of vengeance by the superpower who he exposed, has to come to an end.
This is what you get for exposing the corruption in the government. This guy is locked up in Belmarsh Prison. This is like the Guantanamo Bay of England. He's lived in absolute hell for years now. He has suffered mental breakdowns and even a mini stroke. This is the power of the largest purveyor of violence in the history of man. This is what happens when you go against the establishment. 